So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Hilda Wanjiko Mashada. For most ISECAs, I go by Wanjiko Mashada. I was a vice president like Stephanie here uh, in the year 21 22. Yeah? I was a vice president for the portfolio talent management, which is basically the HR of the organization uh, that the VPs will give more explanation on as uh, we proceed with uh, the event. All right, so over to you, Ted. Thank you, Nziko. I'm Ted Botwiri, current VP OGT, uh, the town 23 uh, We will welcome you again, guys again to Parents and Alumni Day. We'll run you through the agenda and then we'll get into the gist of it. Uh, so, this, like he said, this is the opening plenary. Um, it's just in welcome you guys, welcoming you guys to the event. Uh, we have a couple of agendas lined up, uh, but I promise it's not long of a day, it's quite short. Uh, but uh, we hope we'll keep you entertained and engaged and we'll get to answer all the questions that you might have throughout the course of the event. Uh, so, Karibuni Sana, and again, good morning. So, uh, for the first agenda, uh, we'll have um, our essence piece. Hey, Isaac. What's up? Hey, Isaac. What's up? Okay, my name is Michelle Mugo. I am the Vice President of Brand and Customer Experience, or BCXP for short. I'm basically going to be taking you through what we do as an organization and who we are as an organization. It all started after the Second World War, um, when a group of young people came together and they agreed that cross-cultural understanding could prevent similar conflicts from happening again. I think when I think of this whole concept, I think it's wild to me to think that like a group of young people could be naive and bold enough to think that they could start something that will stand the test of time and that will actually create an impact and prevent a war from happening again. So that's how we basically came into existence. So our why is we strive to achieve peace and fulfillment of humankind's potential. So what we do as ISEC is we try and create an environment where everyone works towards their own meaning of peace um, and fulfillment. So on to who we serve. So we engage and we de develop youth to create a future for themselves, their communities, and therefore the world. I really like this statement because um, it's based on the premise that it has to start with the self. It has to start with you. So um, we engage and develop young guys to work on themselves, to impact their communities, and at the end, we get a greater impact um, at a global level. So, um, how do we do what we do? What is our what is our unique method? So, we believe leadership is the fundamental solution, and it can be developed in anyone, anywhere. So, um, if you go on to the next slide, you will see our unique leadership model. So, what you can see on the left is the set of values that guide our everyday actions as an organization. So we have six values. We have activating leadership, demonstrating integrity, enjoying participation, leading diversity, striving for excellence, um, and acting sustainably. Uh, I think the environment that ISEC creates for young people really, really, really challenges you out of your comfort zone. It challenges the perceptions you have in your inner journey, and it actually helps you to step out of your um, comfort zone and to break from your shell. So, if you continue scrolling, we have our what, and this is what we offer as an organization. So as I mentioned, we enable young people to develop their leadership um, through and learning from practical experiences in challenging environments. Um, also to the right, you can see we provide opportunities that seek to enhance cross-cultural understanding. So you hear us talking about exchange a lot. Um, exchange is basically where people go abroad and volunteer, or they intern, or they teach. Um, and that is basically what we mainly do as ISEC. We offer exchange opportunities for um, the youth to go and intern, volunteer, teach. We also offer membership as a product. Um, so yeah, that is how, that is what we offer as ISEC. 
So, as I've said, Global Talent is our product, even Global Teacher. And outgoing in the sense that they deal with sending students and graduates for internship opportunities abroad. So, so their goal this year is to have 20 approvals and to build strong relationships in terms of networking and partnerships. And this is in regards to countries abroad. So, the next portfolio or the next department is OGB and for its upgrade global volunteer, also the product global volunteer. And it's outgoing but not similar to global talent in the sense that they handle exchange participants looking to go across cultural volunteer opportunities abroad. And their goal this year is to have a hundred approvals. And we start off with IGT, which is uh, which is the full is internal global talent. So this portfolio hands internships here in Kenya. Uh, they look to connect interns from abroad to opportunities here in Kenya, internship opportunities. It's the portfolio that sources out these opportunities from companies here in Kenya who are interested in having global interns. We partner with them. Then we connect exchange participants or any youth from any other country who's interested in these opportunities here in Kenya. They apply for them, they come and partake in them. And their main goal is to have eight opportunity take a partnership. And these are partnerships here within Kenya to actually have those internship positions so that people from abroad or the exchange participants can apply to them. So, so IGB Info is the incoming global volunteer, and it is a team that helps facilitate volunteer exchange experiences by interns from abroad to Kenya who participate in our project and promoting the SDGs. Um, the main goals for IGV are 15 companies. Another goal is to have increased numbers for volunteers in coming for volunteering in Kenya and to have impactful experiences. Uh, moving on to projects. Our project portfolio in the University of Nairobi is in charge of development of new projects as well as running existing projects for the entity. Additionally, it is the portfolio in charge of the corporate social responsibility activities. Our main goals is to raise new projects for the for the LC. Currently, we have uh, one project, which is the global classroom. Uh, another goal is to diversify our project so that they don't only have one focus area. Uh, the global classroom focus area is SDG number four, which is quality education, and we hope to have to diversify so that we can involve more SDGs like the climate action, zero hunger, no poverty. Yeah. My name is Vita Kea. I'm currently at TL in BCXP. My VP is Michelle, Woo! sitting right here. Okay, so currently I'm a student. I'm passing a degree in economics and statistics. I'm in 4.1. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about my ISEC journey. Uh, so um, I applied for ISEC in last year, yeah, last year. But I heard of it in 2021 um, through a friend. So when I when I when I first applied, I applied for OGV, um, outgoing global volunteer, really because I wanted to travel. Honestly, yes. So basically, that's how I joined ISEC. Um, so what I can say is. I learned a lot during my first year in ISEC. Um, I was in the business development portfolio. So basically what we were doing, we were trying to secure partners for this organization. So what we used to do is we used to contact partners, we used to make calls, we used to attend meetings with these partners. And that taught me a lot. That taught me a lot about negotiation, um, taught me a lot about um, 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 uh, sending emails, sending professional emails, how to conduct myself in professional meetings, you know, um, things like that. Um, also, it taught me a lot about balance because I feel like last year um, I was handling like a lot of things at the same time. I had to devise ways of how to um, do my schoolwork and at the same time do my asset work and at the same time handle anything else that was going on in my life. 
but basically it was um, it was really a good experience. So for this year, I feel this year I applied to be a team leader. Now I have a team of three, and I feel like it's such a it's such a good experience. Um, knowing how to influence others, um, knowing how to um, discuss. Uh, ideas with other people and listen to their ideas basically so for this year i was i was very intentional in my role um let's say this year i joined with the aim of actually gaining the skills that i wanted to gain and actually um, enjoying my participation in this organization i've learned a lot about um, uh, giving positive feedback listening to people's criticisms um, uh, just, yes, being open to other people's ideas, handling misunderstandings, handling conflict. Yeah, now, now I know that uh, if we have a conflict, I don't need to slap you. I just need to sit down with you and we have a dialogue, yeah? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe to conclude, I will say um, I'm very grateful to be in this space and I'm really excited to see um, what else the, the year has for me. And basically, I've learned that um, for you to be in a challenging situation, you need discipline, you need commitment, and you need determination. So for all the other ISECs who are in here, all the parents, please support your kids. Like This is a really good opportunity to grow, a really good opportunity for them to be leaders of themselves. And you know, when you're first of all, when you know how to lead yourself, when you're, when you're self-aware, that's when you can be able to lead other people. So. Um, Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, maybe I would say something a little more about what Collins has observed um, about me. And yes, it's true, I'm a very observant person. He's taken up being observant from me. I believe a leader is made, a leader is not born. That's my belief. And Isaac has made a leader out of my son. Because Isaac has given Collins millions of opportunities to deal with his fears. And I believe if he was not in Isaac, he would not have had that opportunity to be able to do so many things at the same time and actually prioritize and make sure none fails. So Isaac has made a man out of my little boy. And I'm very proud standing here as a mother of the president of ISA. And thank you, my son, for making me such a proud mother. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Kendi, Caroline Kendi. I uh, joined ISA in uh, two, when did I join ISA? 1998. 99. Uh, so I'm a UN alumni, um, and the one thing that, that, that was interesting um, was first the, the exposure that Isaac gives, right? And um, yeah, so that was the first thing. And then, but those days, just the idea that after I finish campus, I can actually get an opportunity to work and do an internship in another country. That was very compelling, and that's really at the core of Isaac, and that's why we joined. But then what happened is eventually, we ended up doing a lot more. I got a lot more exposure. I got, um, uh, you know, I traveled to the very many countries, conferences, things like that. And eventually I ended up, this is my introduction, I'm sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and I ended up uh, as, the, as a VP in UOM, and yeah. eventually went to be a VP in the MP. So I'm um, ISEC Dam, uh, but I haven't done any ISEC event or sponsor, or done anything for ISEC for 22 years. So, um, I'm here contrite, uh, but really excited about this being the first day, so thank you for having me. And yeah, currently, so I'm a marketing professional. I've, I've been in marketing most of my entire career, different parts of marketing, different companies. I've been called a career nomad, so I do different companies. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to be here. I think when I think about ISEC and why I'm very passionate about ISEC too today is um, when I reflect a lot of the lessons and the thinking and what you do. The ISEC experience, I really like what you said, the ISEC experience, for me, really prepared me for the corporate world. The kind of stuff that you do, even this kind of work, bringing gathering people together, the planning you guys do in the background, 
that experience, that's exactly what you go and transfer. For me, a lot of my great friendships came from myself. You become friends while doing something that's meaningful, right? So automatically there's an alignment of values that takes you long. For me, that is my message to you guys. You're doing the right thing. Just in case you're doing your own gym, then this is thing. It's actually the right thing. I mean, I, I am a pro, I'm an endorser, I'm an advocate. I think ISEC is actually an amazing, amazing, amazing organization. And I really want to wish you guys well. And you get your 75 exchanges. Yeah, this thing of being KPI oriented, delivering on your numbers, being relentless around delivery. Again, this is where it starts. And once you learn that behavior, and you learn that mindset, I guarantee you, whether you're running your business, whether you're working in a corporate, whether you want to build a startup and be an entrepreneur, as a software engineer, whatever you're doing, it's all the things that you're learning here that will actually guarantee your success in the future. So thank you very much and God bless you guys. A growth mindset is looking at things with, with an outlook of the things can actually change, that uh, they can be better opportunities. So having a growth mindset means you get to say this, right? Having a fixed mindset, there's no like room for growth. It's just you're there and there's nothing you're doing about it. Growth mindset is abundance mentality, whereby you make it happen. Whatever it takes, you make, you make it happen. You see adversity as opportunities to grow, an opportunity to make a difference, an opportunity to be innovative, an opportunity to come with new ideas. Growth group mindset to me is, is, is freedom, right? And I say freedom because you, you, you stop, it's a perspective that is not determined by factors outside yourself because those are not within your control. Right? But it helps you focus on what is it that is in your control. Are you born with that growth mindset? No. I think a growth mindset is developed. Right? That, and that's for me where the freedom is. It's not a certain ilk of people who have it and whatever. How does it show up? It shows up in resilience. Right? Never giving up. Um, it shows up in an attitude. For me, I think it's really about a kind of attitude, always finding solutions, creating problem solving. You see, like what we're doing with the mic, right? Um, being always thinking about solutions because there's always a solution, and then not giving up. Yeah, being relentless, relentless to determine that the outcome is going to come through. And I think you know those are the two things I think I would say. If somebody is, is only looking at the half empty side of the glass, that's a fixed mindset, right? The half full side of the glass, that's a growth mindset. Knowing the difference between the growth mindset and the fixed mindset, like you had mentioned, and uh, acknowledging it is a challenge, the limitation. Be patient enough to listen to other people, to listen to other thoughts, and at the same time, use those new perspectives to grow yourself, and at the same time, to learn that it takes a step at a time. So I think um, <laughs> when I reflect um, on what, what's hard is that it's not, it, it, it requires a lot of self-awareness, a lot of in, introspection, insight. It's something every day. I don't think, and that's the beauty of growth, right? It's a curiosity to get things better. So it, it, it's, it, the ta it's tough, mostly because you have to constantly ask yourself. And that's what I do for myself. I'm like, when something's happening, I'm like, okay, so why is this happening to me? Why is this my story? Why am I here? And, and when, when something happens, good or bad, is what, what can I learn from here, right? And once you do that, then now you start to actually see the areas of your, in your life where you don't have a growth mindset, because it's the ones that you do. And I think that constant journey and, you know, that's I think the most difficult thing. Hey, Isaac. Hey, what's up? What's up? Hey, Isaac. What's, what's up? up? Hey, Isaac. What's up? Nice to meet you, Isaac. Okay, thank you for giving us this space. Um, to answer the first question, I think it's something we've all had. I, I know mental health at this point is something that we've all like had different pieces of. But um, to start with what he asked, the first thing would be depression, which I think we have had variations of depression. And um, yeah. 
So that depression is one of the leading causes of mental health issues in Kenya, anxiety and stress. Stress would be, we can say it's a mental health disorder, but you know, it's a, it's, it's a life circumstance. So it doesn't really, like, we can't really say it is a disorder, but it causes issues in your daily life and it can lead to some disorders coming about. After COVID, we saw a lot of social, we are seeing a lot of social anxiety. Simply because guys got used to being in the house, we were on survival mode, and so interactions have become a bit more strained. Okay, our social budgets we are seeing have really gone down. Another one I'd say is the constant, and we are seeing a lot of people with ADHD, um, depression is a lot. So now we have a lot more topics, um, a lot more titles for the things that are happening. We are able to separate them, we do education, we do intervention. So while I do think that there is some novelty to what we are going through right now, they have been there. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, some of the leading mental health issues, depression, anxiety, also, you know, like ADHD, a lot of them that drop. Uh, to add on to that, um, we currently have neurodevelopmental disorders, which are somehow getting into that um, bracket. Something like uh, ADHD and autism. Okay, I'd say something that affects my mental health on a daily basis is the social interactions. Uh, because sometimes, sometimes my social battery is at 10%, but I have to go outside there. And um, how I know I'm going through that is when I develop some anxiety. If I meet my friends, no matter how comfortable I am around you, I might feel like I'm coming to do a presentation, I'm just coming to say hi. You see? Um, okay, for me, on a daily, I would say pressure. Um, is that, let's say, growth mentality? We are more exposed. Um, we are moving from the mentality where uh, mental health issues is for white people. Like we've grown up knowing those are white people problems, yeah. But it's actually things that maybe in our society were just downplayed, but now we are more self aware. Yeah, so I think that's why it's for the growth. I believe also such forums um, are the ones that are making people more self aware about such problems so people are able to look at themselves and say, okay. I do A, B, and C like this, or when something happens, I behave like this, and they're able to tell through um, learning from other people that maybe I'm going through depression, maybe I have anxiety. Yeah. Uh, basically, I think um, this is a good forum where you're talking about um, mental health, and um, it is good to talk about it openly. I, I know mental health at this point is something that we've all like had different cases or are more open-minded. There has been education, something like this. People giving a space to listen to people's experiences and like just being out there looking for information on what's happening, much as mental health. There's the internet and that the stigmatization has really like we can actually say stigma in comparison to before has is on the decline and that's because of these kinds of conversations.